Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here and today we'll be reading the most recent blog post from Dota the 2. It's an update to Dota Plus and Guilds, but obviously they also talk about MMR reset within this blog post. And so I'm going to be discussing my thoughts about what they've been saying. They also mention when the next hero is coming out. So I'm going to be going over my thoughts, telling you, you know, kind of the vibe I get from this post, what I think will be happening. And yeah, hopefully we can discuss it as a community in the comment section down below as well. But before we do, if you guys could smash the like button and subscribe to the channel, it would mean the world to me. Help out your boy's speed. Uh, if you could do that, I would appreciate it. And now let's get into the video. But before we do, remember 50% off. There's not a lot of time left. 50% off. That's half, believe it or not. I know that's crazy. You're probably impressed that I could even do that much math. By the way, I post every single day. You guys probably know that by now, a lot of you. But if you're new here, welcome. If you don't know about the Game Loop website, all the content we post is not here on YouTube. A lot of it is also over on the website and it is new exclusive content on very cool topics. A lot of things that I know will apply to you guys. I've listed some awesome videos recently that we're making. I also just made a full Medusa course. I mean, there's so many things coming to the website that I'm excited to share with you. So for 50% off, click the link down below right now. Go sign up. And I hope to see you guys there because I really do believe if you click that link and sign up, you're going to learn so much and gain MMR very quickly. Now, let's get into the video. Okay, so this was on October 15th. I'm recording on October 15th. And it starts off by talking about Dota Plus. I don't want to focus too much on it because, you know, really, I'm not anti Dota Plus, but I'm definitely not for Dota Plus. For me, they don't do enough with it to make it worth it. But let's check out this update and see maybe if it is worth it now, right? The only thing I really liked about Dota Plus in the past was the fact that it kept track of your quote unquote hero level. You know, I always thought that was cool. Uh, the voice lines that came with that, unless that's not even Dota Plus, honestly, it might not be. Guys, like I spend very little time paying attention to cosmetics and things like that. I'm much more into actually getting good at Dota, but Dota Plus members can now purchase a new treasure with shards. This treasure features 12 community created sets for Nyx Assassin, Leshrac, Medusa, Venge, Weaver, Clock, Void, Doom, Sven, Axe, Maiden, and Tusk. It also includes the reintroduction of ethereal and prismatic gems with a very rare blazing hatchling courier coming pre-equipped with a random one of each. So, okay, it's new sets, but you have to buy them all still, or you have to work for them. Apparently, they now you can get extra shards. Dota Plus members can earn extra shards, but it's only 57,000, and that's from all of the quests. You, should have, you have to do every single one, uh, and if I go to my Dota real quick, I, I have a lot of shards, right? Let's see what I can buy, you know? Because the question is, if I am getting 57,000 shards for my Dota Plus, hopefully that gets me a set, right? But my problem is the average set at the lowest is 75,000 of these premium sets, right? Now, sure, you can get a uh, treasure, you can get a lot of these uh, weaker sets, but to be honest, if, you know, if I'm personally going to be using my shards, I'm almost only going to be using it on premium hero sets. Now, maybe that's just me. Maybe I just, you know, like the best of the best. I also like these, you know, as you can see, I have some of my favorite heroes maxed out you got the boy profit maxed out you know how it is but um yeah i mean it's cool it's it's a decent amount of shards but for having to complete every single challenge that's pretty underwhelming to me but still at least it's more content it's challenges people can uh, execute on so hey that's cool also they say our plan right now is to have new seasonal treasure available for purchase with shards every three months the next treasure will be available on december 1st and then again every three months after that this will also align with seasonal quests and seasonal terrains which is cool. So content every three months. I mean, not awesome. Three months, in my opinion, is a very long time. It's been three months since the last Dota patch. Technically two, but three since the last, you know, real patch. And so it feels like a very, very long time. You know, with how gaming and games are nowadays, I feel like a lot of players just expect patches every two weeks or every month. Uh, and it really does help games grow. You know, it's not like it's not like, oh, these developers put out a patch and it does nothing. It, it grows the game. I don't know how much money that makes them. Maybe not as much as I think or much at all. But I feel like patches just keep the game alive and they keep the game vibrant. So another couple things that they're doing, which I mean, guys, you're going to have to explain this to me in the comments or explain it to everyone. I'm going to give my take on what I think it means. But obviously, if I get it wrong, I'm happy to be corrected. But Dota Plus members can now use the new role assistant hero grid arrangement. As the Dota community finds new and different ways for heroes to be played, the new role assistant automatically records the picks of every heroes in rank role matchmaking and displays them. Okay, no big deal there. But then the, the, the big thing that I'm seeing is that several features from the battle pass have also moved into Dota Plus. 
and I find this questionable. Right? Why not just let us keep the features? Why not just put it in Dota for people who purchase the Battle Pass? Now, this is where I could be getting it wrong. If you lose the Battle Pass, and let's say you bought the Battle Pass but not Dota Plus, which I'm sure is not a lot of people, I'm sure most people that buy the Battle Pass have Dota Plus, but if you bought the Battle Pass and don't have Dota Plus, now you just don't get these things when you purchase them beforehand? That seems very foolish to me, if it seems greedy if that is the case. Now, the chat wheel sound effects Moo Orchestra Hit are now available by redeeming shards. Like. If you unlock them in the battle pass, do you just not have them? Do you have to go redeem them even if you unlock them beforehand? That's like, that's annoying. If I unlocked it from the battle pass, why do I have to go buy it with shards? That doesn't make any sense. Like, especially if you paid money for these sound effects, right? That doesn't make sense. The pull timers when holding alt are now available to pull Dota Plus members. So that was a battle pass thing, I guess. I thought it was Dota Plus, but now it's a Dota Plus thing. Okay, sure. Once again, I feel like I kind of just wished I was in Dota. Seems like a weird thing to have. It's like somewhat pay to win. I guess the idea behind Dota Plus is that it is sort of pay to win, but most of the features don't really do anything. <laughs> like just to be honest, they don't really help you win. The post game healing and gold breakdowns have now merged with the existing Dota Plus damage tab. Okay. Does that mean we just lost features if we don't have Dota Plus? The post game healing and gold breakdowns have now merged? So if they've merged, does that mean we just don't get like, cause I don't have Dota Plus right now. Do I just not get the post game healing and gold breakdowns? Are they just not available to me we've also bumped the number of players allowed to be on the avoid players list okay sure that seems good more players that people can block shards for everyone we want all players to enjoy earning and spending shards so we have changed the currency to be available to all players rather than being dota plus exclusive okay sure that seems reasonable while the most effective way to earn shards is to have dota plus we've enabled the following subset of features to be available for all players you can get shards and you can get things like that if you're just a normal player with no dota plus now which is cool all players can now reach up to hero level 5 without a dota plus subscription uh, uh, i don't like that come on come on okay okay here's the reason why i don't like this you can get to level 5 right but what do you get at level six? At level six, you get silver, right? So you get silver at level six, okay? And when you hit level six, you get the voice lines, correct? Now, what this is going to do is bait people to buy Dota Plus. Okay, and I, this is maybe me being cynical. I'm really not trying to be cynical, but I read a lot of this beforehand and it, it made me sort of meh, but you reach up to level five and now you're going to be like, I'm so close to level six. I want the voice lines. Fine, I'll buy Dota Plus. Why not? let the player get to level six, right? It's because it's a money grab in that regard. Eh. Once again, I hate to be cynical unless I'm missing something. Why would that be the case? Only subscribers can reach silver tier and above, right? We get that. And so you're going to get so close. You're so close to silver. You're so close to the, to the cool voice lines. Ah, you got to pay. All players can now use tipping for shards. And by the way, guys, I'm all for paying for stuff. Paying is fine. Like paying in life for stuff is fine. It's just whether or not it's like a debate. You know what I mean? If like they're like sort of trying to trick you into it. Uh, is is what's a bit meh to me. All players can now use tipping for shards. Okay, that's awesome. I like that. All players can now earn the weekly shard reward for winning three matches. Non-subscribers earn 500 shards per week. Dota Plus members earn 1,000. That's very reasonable. I think that's awesome. The Dota Plus reward store has been renamed to the Shard Shop. Shard Shop. <laughs> and the premium hero sets, legacy sets, and tools are now purchasable by everyone. The seasonal treasure chat wheel and sound effects I mean, that's great. They're purchasable by everyone, but unless you have Dota Plus, it's pretty hard to get them. And so, I mean, it's cool, but once again, I feel like this is just incentivization to make people buy Dota Plus. I, I do kind of feel that way, right? Because it's they've made it clear that with some of these other changes, it's hard to get shards without Dota Plus, right? There's many reasons why shards are just amped by Dota Plus, and so there's that. Next up, guild updates. We've reintroduced guilds during the Battle Pass. And we're happy to see how many players have participated. Guilds no longer have a guild level. Instead, there is now a weekly leaderboard of guild points earned in a given region. Once a week, guild members will receive their new guild rank and can claim a rewards of shards. That's awesome. I love this. They're actually incentivizing guilds to work together to gain points, which is absolutely fantastic. That's really cool. I love that they're going to make Dota, you know, because what Dota needs is, is a reason for people to log on and play each and every day, each and every week. This is something that's great because it makes you feel connected to your guild. You're going to want to hop on and help out the boys. You don't want to let them, you know, you don't want to let them down. You want to make sure you can get to this tier. So here are the perks. Low tier. Okay, you get bronze, whatever. Silver tier. So you get nothing if you get here. Okay, that makes sense though. 250 shards per week. 500 for Dota Plus. Once again, buy Dota Plus, guys. <laughs> Three guild emoticons. Okay, that's cool. Gold tier, 500 shards. Once again, doubled. Guild sprays. Silver tier emoticons. Oh, all right. I mean, I kind of would assume, but sure. And then platinum tier, 750 shards per week. 
why are they saying per week as if yes obviously it's per week because you know that they said it's gonna reset per week but three caster chat wheels so you know it's cool i feel like 1500 shards is not a lot i feel like you know for how much time you're gonna have to put in to get up to this point i would have wished they made it like 1500 and then 3000 for dota plus but hey they can do what they want at the end of the week all existing guild points will be decay by a percentage oh okay okay i see so it doesn't completely reset at the end of the week it slowly decays right it decays by a percentage why they didn't say the percentage i don't know it's kind of weird i feel like they should just say the percentage maybe it would make people discouraged to do it if it was a high percentage so maybe they're just keeping it out for that reason they'll naturally have to work hard to catch up to the leaders we want this feature to reward active and engaged guilds i like that okay ranked season here we go this is where things get spicy guys in the past we've seen a bunch of negative aspects to forcing everyone to reset their mmr at the same time i kind of wish they said what they were i'm curious i i'm genuinely curious what are these negative aspects to having everyone reset their mmr maybe you guys know them and you can comment them down below also smash the like button that has been part of our reluctance to continue with resetting every six months sure however after we've expressed this reluctance recently, we've gotten a lot of feedback about how valuable they felt this functionality was to them, along with various suggestions to handling this topic. I'm not gonna lie guys, here's my opinion straight up. Most of the time, recalibration, the only people it really affects is high moral players. I know a lot of people are gonna say, ah, oh, speed, that's not true, I'm stuck in 3k and I wanna recalibrate to 4k. That's never gonna happen! It's not gonna happen! And even if you do go from 3k to 4k because you have a miraculous 10 games in calibration, you're gonna drop for the next month, you're slowly gonna drop because you don't deserve to be there yet. I know that's a harsh reality and people hate hearing that type of stuff. It's like, no, it's not true. And yes, there are outliers of people who've played unranked for two years straight and they hop in and they recalibrate and boom, they go up to a KMMR and they can sustain it. Sure, there are outliers, but for the average player, you know, I feel like it's almost just doesn't matter. But for high MMR players, if you're 11 KMMR and you get dropped down to freaking 7,000 or 6,000, heh, that's a lot. That's a lot, because considering last time how they did it was, if you were 10k, I think the max calibration was like 7.5, maybe? Maybe it's like 8k, I don't know. Uh, but that that's how I see MMR reset. I don't, I don't think it actually changes that much for most people. I think it's just like a, it's like a bunch of double down tokens, right? But the thing about double down tokens is unless you are very, very, very strategic with them and very careful, more often than not, they just balance out, just like real MMR does. So, eh. For this season, we're going to try a new approach to MMR resets. We are making the MMR reset optional. So it's an option. You get to choose whether or not you want to reset your MMR. They're spreading it out so it doesn't create too much volatility at the same time. We hope this will remove most of the downsides of MMR resets, which I still don't know what are. I wish they would have said it. Just like a quick little couple bullet points and let the people that really want to do it to be able to do so in a little bit more of a stable environment. I don't really understand this. I, I wish they would explain why. Kind of like, I, I just don't get it. You hope it will remove most of the downsides of the MMR reset. Wait, so there's you can't even necessarily reset on the first day. So if I happen to Dota right now, it says upon logging in, you can go to settings and under the account tab, there's a new MMR recalibration section. So I'm going to go to settings, account tab, and now there's just activate recalibration. So I could click it right now, right? Okay. For the next 10 games, okay? You can only do this once, right? So you only can do this once. I don't get it's so weird. It's so weird. I, I just don't understand. I wish they would explain it. I'm so confused why they would do it that way. I, I do understand that there's a reason that's cool, but I wish they would have explained it. Upon logging in, you can go to settings and under the account tab, there's a new MMR recalibration system. Okay. Uh, and it, it spans from a month. So people might not be able to recalibrate for a month. How weird. Communication. Hey, we love communication. And by the way, guys, I might sound pretty negative at times. I'm very grateful for this blog post. I'm grateful for that for the fact that they're talking. But still, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the stuff uh, and how they're wording things. A lot of it's still sort of dodgy to me and a bit confusing, which is tough, right? Which is tough because I've been looking at other games, games such as Valorant, for instance, as of late, and it just feels like it just feels a lot more clear with what they're doing. Like they're a lot more open and and vocal and it's awesome it's so cool i like it. there's always something to look forward to because they're always talking about it there's always like these constant changes and patches and you know maybe it's because the game is in its money making state so they're doing that and they'll stop eventually like sort of like dota has but all right let's keep going so communication the community has been wanting us to talk a bit more a bit more talk a bit more talk a bit more talk a lot more <laughs> about things we are working on there are a variety of reasons we don't tend to get into those things until something is ready to release because sometimes plans change or an idea doesn't develop into something solid. Yeah, but that's not our fault. It, it, plans change. Okay, I don't know what's going on with 
with with Val. They might have an employee lose someone in their family and they have to take a break. They might have COVID come up and boom, all of a sudden there's a huge wrench in their plan. I get that. Life is weird. Life is tough. Everyone has hard, you know, hard things to do in their life. But just because you're afraid to disappoint people, I don't think should allow you to never say anything or, or rarely say anything. But all I'm really trying to say is that I wish they would say things, even if it might disappoint the community here and there. I just want to know, like, I, I felt so in the blind about the fact that we're just somehow not getting a hero, right? Like, they they announce a hero every year during TI. What's TI? July, August? Sometimes I, I mix it up. But why do we not get a hero? Like, I, I feel like Corona is just not a good excuse. Maybe it is, right? Maybe it is. I don't know them. I don't know their lives. I don't know how hard they have to work to make a new hero. I don't. And so I don't want to, you know, I don't want to insult them. I just feel like it's weird to have something that you've consistently done and then be a bit unclear about why we're not having it, right? Because we didn't have a TI, so it's not like they had to worry about that. And so why not a new hero? I feel like a new hero would be at least a good substitute to not having a TI. We've had no patch, no new hero, no TI. It's kind of the reason why Dota keeps dropping, right? Like five months in a row, right? I think. Okay. But sometimes we aren't sure about dates yet and don't want to set up false expectations for either the scope for an update or to create disappointment if estimations are, are wrong. But there's already disappointment if you don't say anything. So yeah, maybe it's just less disappointment in their opinion. Okay. So first, they're going to share a little bit though. First, as regards to new heroes, we know the community tends to expect new heroes in the fall each year, usually released around November sometime. Okay, I guess I'm wrong. It is around November. I thought it was earlier. I thought it was TI, right? Isn't it usually TI? I thought there's one earlier. Am I wrong, guys? Can someone comment on that? I'm pretty sure there's one around TI. Like, usually there's one hero during TI and then one a bit after, if I'm not mistaken. There's like two. But we are currently aiming for end of November for a new hero release, followed by more that are spread throughout the next year, with next one in first quarter next year. This is my thing about this this sentence right here. So we are currently aiming for end of November for a new hero release. Fine. So another month, which in my opinion feels like a long time, but okay. Another month. Followed by more that are spread throughout the next year with the next one in the first quarter of next year. So that means this is currently 10-15. The first quarter of next year can go all the way up to March 30th, right? Unless I have got that wrong. March 30th. That's five months away, but all right. I mean, I guess we'll have a hero in between and it's pretty reasonable for them to only put out one hero, you know, one hero every five months or even every six months. I don't think that's that crazy, but I feel like you'd be better off if they did it once every four months. Now, that's probably me asking for too much, uh, but <laughs> always just hoping for a lot, I guess. Another area we've been working with is bad player behavior and toxicity. Some of that work we've been doing is public without patch notes. So like, why without patch notes? Why not just say, this is what I mean. Why not say something? Why not write a small tweet, right? Why not write a small tweet on these new changes? I don't get it, right? Like a small tweet, just a small tweet. I feel like that'd be cool. I would be hyped to see that. That's all I'm saying. Just a small tweet. We've been also ramping up our banning of booster accounts as we've improved detection systems in recent months and gained more confidence in the ability to ban for it. In the past 30 days, we've banned over 14,000 accounts. Wow. And have set up systems to continually ban for boosting moving forward. This is an area, however, that needs constant work and improvements to not stagnate. And some of this will benefit from more advanced detection methods that are also in early research and experimental stages. My real question, and I, this might seem weird, guys, how bad for Dota is smurfing and boosting? Is it really the big issue when it comes to like why this game isn't growing? Because honestly, I feel like if I'm part of Valve or I'm running Valve, I'm not really going to focus too much on account boosters or smurfs yet. Do they hurt games from time to time? Yes, but... If you have the right mentality, you can actually enjoy playing against Smurfs. I know that sounds crazy, but I, I actually do look at it that way. I, I've, I've even, you know, I've just even been that way. It can feel good to beat out a Smurf. It feels great, actually. I don't know if I would want them to put so much time into this because, like, the biggest portion of this article um, of the communication tab is we're banning people, which I, I get it, but like, they're always banning people, and that's cool, but. <sighs> Once again, it just feels like filler. I'm sorry to be so negative, guys. I really am. I love Dota. I, I know, I know. We all love Dota. It's I've played this game for, what, six and a half years now? All day, every day. For that long. Less so now, but you guys get what I'm saying? Like, I want this game to thrive. I want it to just be bigger again. I'm a bit disappointed, obviously, that there hasn't been a TI that obviously hurt my, hurt my uh, happiness a little bit because TI is just such an exciting part of my year every year. And, uh... Yeah, no patch as well. So I think I'm going into reading this blog post 
with more of a negative mentality than I usually would have. Usually I'd be more ecstatic that Dota is talking, but with how, you know, how bad this patch was in my opinion, just, I mean, it wasn't a bad patch, it was just okay. It's just like an alright patch. Not, not, it wasn't bad, I, I don't mean it that way, but it's just mediocre. It's really, it was pretty short and it's just a ton of number changes that frankly no one cares about. And I think Valve knows that it's not that no one really cares, it's just that it's not that interesting compared to obviously a lot of the other changes they put into the game. Uh, but all right, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned some things. I'll be reading the comments for this video for sure. So I'll hope to respond to a lot of them and I'll see you guys in the next one. Give me your thoughts. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dota or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me. But I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there. And generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end. Because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.